Why do some Wi-Fi routers block multicast packets going from wired to wireless? I have worked with dozens of consumer-grade Wi-Fi routers, and they have been really hit or miss with this, though it seems to be getting better. Example of issue. A device that can be discovered with MDNS is connected into the router with a cable. Another device connected to the router on Wi-Fi attempts to discover the device in step 1. Packets from the device on Wi-Fi don't make it to the wired device, or if they do, packets sent from the wired device don't make it to the wireless device. Many routers have settings allowing this to work. See this URL and this URL for examples. Is there a list anywhere of incompatibility with this? What is the cause? Just a bug in the router? It's usually due to bugs in the Wi-Fi home gateway routers, APS, or sometimes in the wireless client chipsets slash drivers slash software. On Wi-Fi, sending multicasts from the app to the wireless clients, this is known in the standard as from the distribution system or froms, is tricky, so there are lots of ways it can fail, and it's easy to introduce bugs. Even though the radio medium is unreliable enough that 802.11 unicasts are required to have link level acknowledgements, apps, and get retransmitted several times if there's no act, from's multicasts are never act because they'd need to be act by all the wireless clients of the app, which could be quite an act storm. So instead, from's multicasts have to be sent at a low data rate, using a simpler, slower, easy to decode even at low signal to noise ratios modulation scheme, that can hopefully be received reliably by all the clients of the app. Some APS let the administrator set the multicast rate, and some administrators unwittingly set it too high for some of their clients to receive reliably, breaking multicast delivery to those clients. When WPA, TKIP, or WPA2, ICCMP, encryption is in use, FROMS multicasts have to be encrypted with a separate encryption key that is known to all of the clients. This is called the group key. When a client leaves the network, or every hour or so, just for good measure, the group key needs to be changed so that the client that left no longer has access to decrypt the multicasts. This group key rotation process sometimes has problems. If a client doesn't acknowledge receipt of the new group key, the app is supposed to de-authenticate that client, but if it fails to do that due to a bug, a client could have the wrong group key and thus be deaf to multicasts without realizing it. When WPA2 mixed mode is enabled, that is, when both WPA and WPA2 are enabled at the same time, the FROMS multicasts typically have to be encoded with the TIP cipher, so that all clients are guaranteed to know how to decode it. FROMS multicasts have to be queued up by the app and only transmitted at times when all clients who care about multicasts can be expected to have their receivers powered on. The time between the safe to transmit FROMS multicasts periods is called the time interval. If the app or clients screw up their time interval handling, it could result in clients unable to receive multicasts reliably. Some APS have features to keep wireless clients from being able to talk directly to each other, to maybe keep your wireless guests from hacking your other wireless guests. These features usually block multicasts from Valon devices to other Valon devices, and could well be implemented in a naive way that even blocks multicasts from LAN to Valon. The crazy thing is, Todd's multicasts are done just like Todd's unicasts, and so they rarely break. And since Todd's multicasts, not from's multicasts, are all that are needed when a wireless client gets a DHCP lease and opts to find its default gateway, most clients are able to get connected and surf the web, check email, etc. even when from's multicasts are broken. So a lot of people don't realize they have multicast problems on their network until they try to do things like MDNS, aka IETF ZeroConf, Apple Bonjour, Avahi, etc. A couple other things to note, regarding wired to wireless multicast transmissions.
Most LAN multicasts, such as MDNS, are done using special multicast address ranges that are not meant to be routed across routers. Since Wi-Fi capable home gateways with NAT enabled count as routers, MDNS is not meant to cross from one to WLAN, but it should work from LAN to VLAN. Because multicasts on Wi-Fi have to be sent at a low data rate, they take up a lot of airtime. So they're expensive, and you don't want to have too many of them. That's the opposite of how things work on wide Ethernet, where multicasts are less expensive than sending separate unicasts to each machine tuning into a multicast video stream for example. Because of this, many Wi-Fi APS will do IGV snooping to watch which machines are sending Internet Group Management Protocol IGV, requests, expressing their desire to tune into a given multicast stream. Wi-Fi APS that do IGV snooping won't automatically forward some classes of multicasts onto the wireless network unless they see a wireless client try to subscribe to that stream via IGV. The documents that describe how to do IGV snooping properly make it clear that certain classes of low bandwidth multicasts, MDNS fits in this category, are supposed to always be forwarded even if no one has explicitly asked for them via IGV. However, I wouldn't be surprised if there are broken IGV snooping implementations out there that absolutely never forward any kind of multicast until it sees an IGV request for it. TL, Doctor, Bugs. Lots of opportunities for bugs. And occasional poorly designed features and configuration errors. Your best defense is to buy high-quality APS from companies that care about making sure multicasts work. Since Apple loves Bonjour, MDNS, so much, Apple's APS are probably the most consistently excellent at passing multicasts reliably, and Apple's Wi-Fi client devices are probably the most consistently excellent at receiving multicasts reliably. At Spiff made some awesome points in his answer and I won't reiterate here. But there are some other answers and alternatives to get around this issue. Short answer? I don, T think they always block so much as they just don't do it up begin with due to engineer laziness creating any particular device. Some don't have it as a high priority, and some just don't have the time to make it work. It's not high on the priority list compared to all the new features marketing is using to sell these consumer-grade devices and it's a feature most non-tech savvy people have no clue about, so down the priority list it goes until the point that unless a large pool of owners complain about it, it gets left out of any revision updates. If you want a device that supports it, do the due diligence on your research and you'll get a device that supports it, or if you can find a new or used device that supports something like OpenERT or Tomato from Polar Cloud, you can be assured of getting what you need. Good luck. Smile. Hi, <laughs> Thank you.